this is Dave Tate with a new edition of Table Talk. Well, I guess you could kind of call it a Table Talk. It's really not what I realized when I put together my notes for the Twitter chat that we're going to be having tonight in an hour is that a lot of the tweets that I'm going to be sending out as far as the tips and um, ideas and so forth probably are going to need to be expanded on and it's really hard to do with some of these things with 140 characters so I'm going to throw this together real quick I don't have a microphone I don't know how this is going to turn out audio wise I'm not going to deal with all that stuff I just got done training so I'm going to knock these things out get home shower and eat and then get ready for this Twitter chat so basically the chat tonight is going to be about post meet training or training while you're in off season I guess you I don't really think that a lot of the strength sports really do have an off season but we'll say training during a time that you really aren't preparing for a meet or a contest bodybuilding show or whatever you're doing so kind of in the the, the in-between phases, what you're going to look for, and some of the ideas and some of the suggestions that I have for those. The, the first ones I'm going to go through real quick are post-meet training, and this would be for pretty much specifically for powerlifters. A lot of it is some stuff that I did do. Some of it is some things that I didn't do that I wish I would have done. And some others are some things that I write into the programs that I do design for people and have had a lot of success and a lot of luck with those. So the, the first thing to keep in mind, the goal of any powerlifting program is to be able to peak for the meet. So we're going to leave that out of, the, out of the mix here. So the meet's over, good, bad, whatever and happened. What do you do then? Um, throughout most of my career, training never stopped. We just kind of got right back onto it. And when I was training with a conjugated system or a concurrent type system, that, that works fairly well because we did reduce the intensity, but we kept the density and we kept the volume the same. You know, I define volume as the total number of repetitions or sets in a workout. I don't consider that as a multiplier or a factor of the weight. You know, when you factor the weight into there, I define that as being your workload for the day not necessarily volume. People define it differently depending upon who you talk to. I think it's important to define how you define each one of these things. Intensity I define as a percentage of weight, not how hard you actually trained. So the intensity after a meet obviously is gonna drop down because you just came out of a phase block, whatever you wanna call it, of lifting 90% plus weights or going through a circumaximal phase. So the 90% is pretty much over, so that's gonna drop. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna drop all of your parameters at one time. The, I do have a tweet in here that links back to a training log to an email that James the Thinker Smith sent me, which is excellent in defining what I'm talking about here as far as what you do wanna drop, what you wanna keep in. I do think there is a place and there is a time for a complete separation of, of training so there is no training but that's a very to me it's a very rare thing and I also think it's a little bit of a high risk thing as well because it's every time I've done that the injuries that I've had have gotten worse and it takes an extended period of time before you can really get back into your training then you got to ramp the volume back up so without rambling on what I want to get into is you know the first one was I'm a big proponent of keeping the volume the same because the volume is already reduced because that's been coming down for the last week or two, depending upon how long somebody deloads or tries to peak before the meet. So the volume actually is very, very low. So you don't want it to go lower. You just kind of want to maintain that volume for a week, maybe two, and then start bringing it up a little bit to bring some of that general physical preparedness back into your programming, which as you come into a meet, it becomes more um, SPP or more specific physical preparedness. So that's gonna flip a little bit, but you have to have a little bit of a, a plateau, a, a gradual loading as far as the volume before you start to jam it back up again. So typically I like to go two, three weeks. It depends upon the person and how they are, how advanced they are. Another thing that I like to do, 
especially for the competitive lifters, is I like to take all the loading off of the spine. So any type of spinal compression, I want out. So the, one of the rules that I have for a lot of the lifters that I work with, and this is a lot, not all, is I don't want any barbells on their back at, in any way whatsoever for at least four to six weeks. Sometimes I'll go as high as eight. I do realize that that means that they're going to lose strength. You're going to lose strength during this phase. There's no doubt about that. The goal is to make sure that you stay within 90% of what your strength levels are. You can dip a little bit under, but as soon as you start getting under 85, 80%, you're going to have a long way back. So by taking the bar off the spine, what I'm trying to do is to let the central nervous system recover a little bit better, to let the, the spine recover a little bit better. because. You know, let's face it, when you're, when you're powerlifting and you've been in the game for a long time, your spine's taking a beating, you know. So the, to let that basically deload more or less and switch over to different movements like belt squats, um, leg presses, as long as your, your hips are not turning or folding or rolling or however you want to define it at the bottom, um, any, any single leg work, you know, just leg work that you can do that doesn't involve any type of compression or a bar on your back, all for that. Another rule that I put in there over the years is I don't, also I don't want to see a barbell in the hands. You know, dumbbells are fine, machines are fine, but I don't want any barbells. Um, I've seen that be very effective as far as uh, shoulders, um, upper back, uh, cervical spine, as far as deloading of that to be able to make sure they're better prepared for when they start jamming for another meet. Do keep in mind that four weeks for me when I program is about the minimum I'm going to put on here. Every week that I go after four weeks is going to be another two weeks that I know I need to build into the program before I start peaking them for the next meet. So if my typical training cycle is going to be 12 to 14 weeks and we end up going six weeks, I need to add another four weeks to that because I need to get them prepared to be able to prepare for the meet because we're getting too far away and the strength is dropping too much during that time period. The other thing I like to do and I think is extremely important is to pull all restoration methods slowly out of the program after the meet's over. So if you've been doing contrast showers, hot tubs, whirlpools, massage therapy, ART, you know, whatever you've been doing for restoration means, foam rolling, any of that kind of stuff. I don't want, I, I don't want it all pulled out at one time, but after the meet's over, I want to get to the point where there's very, very little restoration means in the program because once you get into the full-fledged off-season, it's going to be more hypertrophy type based. There'll still be some strength work, but I'll program the max effort work being threes and fives, so there's not going to be a lot of singles. It's going to be more focused the way that I program for more dynamic work and more hypertrophy type work during that phase. So that's really from a joint standpoint and from a central nervous system standpoint, it's actually a little bit easier to recover from. So you're not going to need all the restorative means that you needed when you were four, six weeks before me. The thing with the restoration process and with the different means that you're using for that is those work just like training does or just like an exercise does.